is that online dating site that I keep talking about? Well, I was kind of thinking, when was I talking about an online dating site? And I think that there's two things. One, I do talk about online dating as a really good viable option for meeting other like-minded people. I met my husband on the internet 20 years ago. My mother-in-law, she is widowed and she met her current husband on the internet. I know so many people who have and they're still married and it's working out well. And so then I was thinking, what website would I recommend? Because the one that I went with, I had typed in Christian Singles Conference because I was just trying to find like-minded people in my area. And in the, in the, it wasn't Google search, but it was a search engine. Then it came up Christian Singles Match. And that's no longer there. It was a free option. I'm all about being inexpensive. <laughs> So that's not there, but I did ask some of these cu these couples who were married who met on the internet, what sites did they use? What did they like about them? What would they recommend? Now, I'm not going to endorse any one site because you have to be so vigilant and cautious because anybody could be a scammer out there. You need to be careful. But some of the sites that they mentioned were eHarmony and match.com and what they liked about them was the fact that you could enter things about your life and who you are and your personality and your belief system those fundamental aspects of who you are and then it would indeed match you with somebody else some of them have some free trials and one of the couples said that they had gone with both eHarmony and match.com and the person that they're currently married to actually came up for them on both of those uh, sites. So I always try to caution you when you are filling those out, try to not set the bar low when it comes to fundamental belief systems. If you're a Baptist, look for a Baptist. If you're a King James Baptist, look for a King James Baptist. Broaden where your geographical things are. I lived on the East Coast and my husband lived over here in Idaho. And so I cared more about the doctrine and how they wanted to raise their children than I cared about where I was going to live. And I'm so glad that I made that choice because I got to experience so many new things in a wonderful church over here. So major on the majors and minor on the minors. What does the Bible say is important? What are the statistical things that cause conflict and divorces in marriage. My contacts, I always do this and my contacts get so blinky. So, hey y'all. <laughs> um, yes, so focus on those fundamentals, the finances, your family and in-law and how you deal with conflicts, um, your, your vision for life. Like, do you wanna be in the ministry? Uh, then it's gonna be really hard for you as a woman to to marry somebody who's not, even though I don't necessarily think that women are called into the ministry, we're called to follow our husbands, or you can be a single woman who chooses to uh, be a, a missionary of sorts, not necessarily a pastor, but the idea is those fundamental key aspects of what you believe, your finances, your family, um, your, your doctrine, how you wanna raise your children, you really need to set the bar high on those and how can two walk together unless they be agreed. And then those lesser minor issues that really aren't even a biblical issue. If somebody's a little bit not what you deem as attractive, maybe you might want to change that around a little bit. Maybe not. Maybe that's a really high priority for you and they're health and their fitness and maybe that to you is a really big deal and if that if that is a really big deal keep it high on the list but just understand that that's not necessarily a biblical qualification that should trump other things so just keep that in mind when you're putting in those profiles and then in the next video I talk about how do you get to know somebody well and that could also be helpful in this topic